Alright guys, welcome to your 42nd tutorial, I believe, and in this tutorial, we're going to be finishing up talking about lists. So, before we learn how to make checkboxes and radio buttons, but as you can see, whenever we had something that had like 50 choices to choose from, it could get kind of clustered on our webpage. For example, if we had to choose from like what state we lived in, we don't want to give them 50 radio buttons, or if we had to select, I don't know, um, I don't know, what's like a list of countries, we don't want to have a checkbox with like 800 different countries on it. So, in order to kind of conserve that space, what XHTML did, or the developers of it, I say like XHTML, like it's a guy I know down the street. Yeah, what XHTML did last night is the dumbest thing. Anyways, what XHTML did is they made something called a drop down list. And a drop down list takes the space of a single element, but it allows you to have all those options inside it. So, you know, that's how you say it. So, anyways, in order to make a drop down list, you need two tags. The first tag is called the select tag. Now, this is pretty much, well, let me make it first. Select, whoa, that's not how you make it. All right select and ending select now all of your options like all your states all your names all your countries are gonna go in between these two select tags this pretty much defines where all your options are going to go the thing is it takes one um, attribute and that's the name and that is because if you have more than one select list it needs a way to identify it so I'm gonna name mine like let's make a list of activities that you can do today activity so now we have a list with no choices in them so let's go ahead and start adding some options and in order to do this it's a single tag actually it's a double tag I lied but the beginning one is a single tag and the first one is option now it of course ends with the ending option and in between it is the value that appears whatever the user is looking at so let me go ahead and put something like um play the guitar and now option takes one attribute by default and that's the value so value equals play so now let's go ahead and let me show you guys an example of what I'm talking about when I say what the user sees I'm talking about this right here so now you know you're not in the dark wondering what's going on whenever I make the rest of them so this text in between here is basically what the user is going to see this value is whenever you're programming this data later on that's what the programmer sees or that's what's stored in the database that's behind the scenes stuff but anyways this is what we really have to work about worry about the presentation right now so anyways we have one option in here and that's play the guitar so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and make like four other ones so paste 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 so what other activities do I like to do daily um maybe you could do comb your hair by the way what website would ask what you're gonna do today oh yeah Facebook and Twitter and every other website in the world but anyways uh, what else could you do I guess you could comb someone else's hair I guess if you really wanted to um okay fourth thing let's say teach a uh, possum some people spell possum like this O P O S S U M like a possum who says that is that even how you spell it is that even how you say it I don't know someone leave me a comment and tell me and the last thing mm, let's think of something easy shave why not so now we have to change the values uh your someone else's these values don't really matter we're not even using them uh oh possum maybe there's an O at the end and shave so anyways now we have a list of drop down this is basically your drop down list and we have five different options inside play the guitar comb your hair sh comb someone else's hair teach a possum to tango and shave so let's go ahead and save this and see what we got by default it's going to be the width of the longest one and that is because whenever you drop down you want to be able to read it and also by default it's going to be the first option that appears in your list so by default play the guitar is selected but say they go to the site and you should probably include one of these what do you want to do today question so then they know what the heck they're choosing and then they can go in the drop down list and say hmm I want to teach a possum to tango or hmm 
I feel like shaving today. So now you have this awesome website with five different things that they can do. So anyways, that is the basics of a drop down list and how to create a basic drop down list with as many different options as you want. And don't forget to add the unique value because later on whenever we're learning JavaScript and PHP, uh, we're gonna know, you know, how to differentiate them. So anyways, thank you guys for watching uh, in the next tutorial. No idea what I'm going to cover, but probably more about forms. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next tutorial.